wanted to start off the show, though, Judd, asking, did they do enough for Kirk Cousins this offseason? Because that was obviously the fans' focus coming into the offseason was putting things and infrastructures around Kirk Cousins to put him in a better position to succeed this year, starting with, obviously, the offensive line. But you're never sure really with any NFL team, if they see eye to eye with the fans in terms of what the needs are, where they need to improve. And when you have Mike Zimmer in the room, who's all defense all the time, you're really not sure if the Vikings see eye to eye with the fans in terms of what needs need to be addressed in an off season. They obviously did. They go and they get Gary Kubiak to start the off season. There wasn't a lot done in free agency because that money went to Anthony Barr and to keep Everson Griffin Because Zim won free agency. Zim won free agency. Yeah. But then in the draft, the first four picks, yep. offensive linemen in the first and fourth with a tight end and a running back sandwiched uh, in between those guys, did they do enough for Kirk Cousins this offseason? Absolutely. Now, the question becomes, how are these guys as rookies going to fare, right? Because if they come in and struggle, that's a big problem. But I would say, given the parameters in which they were working, which is not much cap room, what cap room that they seem to have went towards bringing back guys like Barr. If you look at this draft and the fact that they went um, with offensive players for the first four picks for the first time since I think the seventies or the sixties. Yes. They, they took as big a step. Now they are not um, immune from criticism in the sense that you could make the case that you should have let a guy like Barr walk. I mean, we, we can go back and forth on, on that because there's probably a case to be made. That there's some teams that would have said, Given what we saw in 2018, Barr has to be allowed to walk. And if he comes back and begs to come back, you you simply say no. So that's up for debate. But I but given where they were going into Thursday night and and the help that Cousins had to get, and the fact that this offensive line was awful in 2018, my answer is yes on that. And but it remains to be seen now. How many of these four guys can step in and have the immediate impact that a veteran player might have had if you had gone out on the market and signed a center, a tackle, a guy like that? And there were a few on the market. The market wasn't flooded with offensive nope. linemen by any means because it never is. Because usually when teams find those guys, they know the value of them and they try and lock them up before they ever hit free agency. Usually offensive linemen who hit free agency, not all the time, but usually they're guys who are a little bit older and past their prime. And that was that was the case with the majority of the free agent market when you looked at offensive linemen this offseason. It was a lot of guys who were approaching or in their early 30s and probably didn't and they have a lot you. of good football left. Yeah, out. they could have yeah, a they, few years. Exactly. But but this whole thing and, and this draft and what makes this such an interesting situation is this whole thing is about e immediate fixes, right? Like this is not about now – after you get past probably round four, then yes, it's about 2020, 2021 and beyond. I get that. But this team right now, coming off a very disappointing year, is still in an extremely um, pressurized situation of win now. So we are talking about the the philosophy of everything that they've done since the, uh, since the loss uh, to the Bears to end the season. Everything revolves around what can we do to fix that right now, not what can we do to fix that in 2020. And, and ordinarily, I think this team likes to operate with, uh, well, we're trying to look, you know, 10,000 yard view, right? We're right. trying to look way out. They don't have that now. This whole thing revolves around one guy, Kirk Cousins, a defense that is very good, but is not not necessarily young. and so. The issue that they're faced with is everything they've done as far as re-signing guys, as far as uh, restructuring guys, as far as the draft, the first four rounds. Everything was based on what's going to give us the best chance to uh, to come back from a disappointing 2018 and not just be good, but make a deep playoff run, Super Bowl run. I, I love what they've done around Kirk Cousins this year, not just in the draft. You've you've been talking a lot about Gary Kubiak since he got to town and, and the impact that he could have. And this that's the system that Kirk Cousins flourished in in Washington under Mike. It was Mike Shanahan's system originally that Gary Kubiak adopted and adapted. And and it went down the line and eventually ended up in Washington with Mike or Kyle Shanahan and uh, and and Kirk Cousins. But. 
when we talk about whether or not they did enough for Kirk Cousins, we're talking about Super Bowl, right? Yes. Oh, that's exactly it. Yeah, because this, you and this I is not this have, is not let's make the playoffs. Right. You and I have been saying all offseason that when when as soon as they signed Kirk Cousins to that deal, three years guaranteed twenty nine million a year, uh-huh. you opened a window where it was Super Bowl or bust. If they don't win a Super Bowl in this three year window, it's a failure, right? The right. Minnesota Minnesota Vikings have failed as an organization if they don't win a Super Bowl in this this Kirk Cousins era. Did they do enough that now you feel good that they can win or contend for a Super Bowl? Because to me, what that comes back to ultimately, even if Kirk Cousins is improved and that offense is improved, that's good for maybe one game. That's that's the ceiling for improvement that I see on Kirk Cousins okay. and the offense. That's you you maybe gotcha. added a win to your to your to your total for twenty nineteen with what you did for Kirk Cousins in the offense. If you're going to win the Super Bowl, if you're going to contend or be in the conversation for a Super Bowl, that defense needs to return to 2017 form. But, That's the key here, isn't it? The de- yeah, but, but the defense struggled, I think, through about four games. Through that Rams game, they were not good. They they started to, uh, statistically, if you go back and look, they started to fall apart in the second half against the Saints in, in that playoff game, mm-hmm. which they came back and won on that incredible play to Stephon Diggs. Then they went and played in Philly and got embarrassed. The defense did. Then they opened the season with four consecutive games in which you said, what's going on here? So it was a six-game stretch or so. And then they got back to being pretty good. The problem was the offense couldn't score points then. You know, you go to the Patriots, you don't score points. Seattle, you don't score points. So I think the defense to end last year was back to being very solid. But this whole, so so to back up now, to me, this entire conversation revolves around what the conversation was when Cousins signed, which is, is your offense now good enough? And, and in, in Cousins' defense slightly here, there was too much put on him. He, he was relied upon too much going into last year to be the guy. He's not the guy. He is... To state it perfectly clearly again, he was the best available free agent quarterback of, available to the Vikings last year, okay? So they they signed the guy that they thought was the best guy on the market, and they were probably right. That being said, he's not Brady, not Rodgers, not Wilson. So as you look at this roster now, and let's say the defense is being back to very solid, do you think this offense is good enough? Because that was... That was the move in signing Cousins was right. how can you get the offense to be good enough? But the key to this team was always that defense. So do you think now this offense with these moves is good enough to be able to score enough points for a defense that for the most part is going to have success against opponents? If this defense is back to 2017 form. But look, at, even, look even, at after game four last year, it got it got stronger. But again. it wasn't dominant. In 2017, they were the best or second best defense in the NFL. And that's what they thought they were adding Kirk Cousins to. To me, you either have to get back to that level on defense or you need your offense to be so good that you make up for whatever drop off there is in the defense from 2017 to 2018 to 2019. And look at the guys who had who dro- who had drop offs last season on defense. First of all, Sheldon Richardson is gone, and they didn't replace him. Mm-hmm. They just didn't replace him. So that's one guy who's just gone. Everson Griffin, he had a drop-off in his production. You don't tend to ha- turn the arrow around the other way and point it back up in your 30s in the NFL. Same can be said about Xavier Rhodes, who's approaching his 30s and had a drop-off in his production last year. If this defense is going to return to 2017 form or make up for whatever drop-off there was, from 2017 to 2018, it's going to take Anthony Barr living up to that contract. And same way we talk about Gary Kubiak and what he can do for an offense in terms of scheme and play calling. I think that you heard Mike Zimmer after Anthony Barr signed his contract say, we're going to do some really different things this year. That might be where you get a, a, an uptick in your production or a better defense from 2018 the 2019 for Mike Zimmer and play calling and scheming and doing some different things specifically with Anthony Barr, getting him after quarterbacks than we've seen in previous Mike Zimmer defense.